299, which of the following molecules have dipole moments? And then we have C, Cl2, F2. Okay. So, what is a dipole moment? Well, a dipole moment is a fancy way for saying in this whole entire molecule, there is a unequal distribution of electrons, meaning that one or maybe a couple of the atoms are pulling electrons in a favorable direction. It's like tug of war when one side is clearly winning and the other side is clearly losing. And there's that pull, that unequalness in the rope. That's a dipole moment. Now, there's only a special molecule that has a dipole moment, and that is polar molecules. So in order to have a dipole moment, we know that we have to be polar. According to our acronym SNAP, S-N-A-P, um, if your molecule is purely symmetrical, it is classified as nonpolar, and nonpolar has no dipole moment. So non, no. If your molecule is asymmetrical, so there's no symmetry, then it is classified as being polar, and this is where you have a dipole moment. So dipole moment. So I guess if we kind of analyze this, dipole, P-O-L, goes with polar. So nonpolar, no pull, no dipole. Um, so yeah, now as we're just getting our little, you know, our feet wet here with learning how to figure out if something has a dipole moment, always take a step back and draw the Lewis structure. Lewis structure can give you a lot of answers. Can tell you about bond polarity, can tell you about actual molecule polarity, dipole moments, hybridization, molecular geometry. Um, yeah. So if they don't say, you know, draw the Lewis structure, just take a few seconds, draw it out so you can actually see what's going on. So in this case, I'm going to draw it out. Now, there's a lot of videos on this channel just designated to helping you draw Lewis structures from scratch. We go step by step. Um, so if you do need more guidance, you could always go to those videos. And I'm there every step of the way for you guys. This one will kind of be a quick inversion. You can pause the video and see if your answer matches mine. Now, this one has a little trick to it. Not really a trick, but you'll, you'll see in a little bit. But remember, always the, the least electronegative goes in the middle. So in this case, it's got to be carbon. And they're now saying that we have two chlorines and two fluorines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to try to draw maybe two different representations. Now, let's just say that maybe one representation I have chlorine, chlorine, fluorine, and fluorine. But maybe what happens if I put chlorine and chlorine next to each other and fluorine and fluorine next to each other? That will kind of maybe change it up a little bit just to kind of see that they didn't specifically say where the chlorines and where the fluorines were. You could have put them opposite each other or you could have put them next to each other. Now for both of these, let's just draw the Lewis structure. Oh, and by the way, you know, you could have put the two chlorines down here and the two fluorines up here. Doesn't matter. Um, but let's draw the Lewis structure. For carbon, we need all single bonds. And for each halogen on the outside, they all get the lone electrons. And there's six of them to make that octet. So we just finished one of these and now we're moving on to the other one okay and we're almost done this is the everyone's favorite part of drawing Lewis structures mine mine too <laughs> just kidding okay but now all the dots Ooh, what happened to this guy there we go okay now everybody's accounted for we have the Lewis structure now we just have to find out is this molecule a polar molecule well remember asymmetrical is polar. Now the thing here is that you can cut this many different ways through the center atom. If you find one that is asymmetrical, the whole thing is classified as asymmetrical, it's polar. So that's why we kind of have to like exhaust all possibilities. Now in this case, let's work with this one, right? If I draw 
the symmetry line down this way, where I see that I clearly have fluorines on this side. It's fluorine dominant on the bottom left, right? And on the top part, it's chlorine dominant. Does the two sides match? Mm-mm. I got fluorines on this side and chlorines up top here. That is not good. So this is a big X. These do not check out. So right off the bat, since we have that, can I keep rhyming? <laughs> right off the bat, since we have that. Shoot. <laughs> Usually I'm pretty good at that, but I'm on the spot now. I'm being recorded. I'm trying to do this video. Um, but yeah, let's just keep going. So right off the bat, since we have that, uh, we can determine that this molecule is asymmetrical. Because my two sides are not the same. And once you find out one of them, that voids all the other ones. Because with Lewis structures, you know, they can be in a lot of different arrangements. Especially if they don't tell you the makeup of it. So this is asymmetrical. It's definitely polar. So we know that this has a dipole moment. Now just to kind of go back on the first one that we drew, this one might be a little bit more tricky. Uh, because it seems like everything is laid out. You have your chlorines, you know, going top to bottom, and you got your fluorines going left to right. But the idea here was that, you know, if you can get a orientation in which it is polar, it's got to be a dipole moment. Also, keep in mind that if we are just diving into molecular geometry, right? A carbon or a central atom with four single bonds is tetrahedral. And the bond angles for that is 109.5. Even though we draw Lewis structures as if it was pure 90 degrees, right? Everything is like boxed in here. This is not really how it is in real life. The real life example would be that you have one bond and it's a little kinked, and then you have three-dimensional um, properties. So it's also the idea that even though it looks pretty good on paper, right, you have a 90 degree up, 90 degree down, it's not really 90 degrees. So that's why with tetrahedrals, just, um, just be careful. But if you can draw it in another way, it's automatically, you know, the polar, and this got a dipole moment. And that's it. I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Um, and I look forward to helping you with more problems. Uh, we got tons of videos on the channel, over 5,000 videos, I think at the moment, uh, for physics, math, and chem. Uh, we basically do a whole, well, for this, we're, I mean, I'm doing a whole um, course on chemistry. And my brother has a whole, basically a whole textbook on physics as well. So go check it out. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.